Um, there's a fake advocate that came about, Brian Mwenda, and uh, of course uh, the DPP has given instructions that he needs to be um, investigated and probably arraigned. Uh, and what does this mean, especially for the legal profession that many would think is this sacred place where only the qualified practice, for someone to sit in court and present a case before a judge or a magistrate, I mean, what is that? Uh, yes, there's definitely a failure in the system. And it's not the first time we've heard about fake professionals. There was a doctor who had been operating uh, surgeries, mm -hmm. performing surgeries for years, and it turned out that he had never been to medical school, but had been an assistant nurse or nursing aide or and so. And a pilot. Uh, the, I think what needs, this is a wake-up call just for the, the legal system to know there is something wrong. Remember today, we, in fact, I was surprised because we have an elaborate system that if I appear in court, one can literally go on the LSK website and can check my practicing license number when I was admitted and whether my license is current. But obviously, what has happened is, is somebody- It's a requirement or it's- It's a requirement, it's a requirement. Today, actually, you can go online and check if I'm- No, no, no. I'm asking, mm -hmm. Once you appear before a judge or a magistrate, mm -hmm. is it a requirement that it's checked that you're... No, no, it's not a requirement, mm -hmm. but what happens is most uh, members of the public check. If I'm getting a professional and I'm taking from a lawyer, I would normally check that. Yeah. But also nowadays we are required, when you stamp court documents, your rubber stamp actually has your admission number, which is your license number actually. Uh, and so usually that is was supposed to be uh, bring it so that anybody can search. What it now means, somebody has hacked the LSK website or somebody is working with the law society officials. So in fact, what we should be telling uh, President Theuri of LSK, he spends half the time taking government to court when he should be actually checking his own house. And then he's taking the wrong people to court when he should be taking the pest uh, control products board to court. So I think LSK also has to begin to think itself. Because I think we'd reached a point as lawyers where we thought everybody else was wrong, we are fine. But I think this has been a good wake-up call. Mm. As a lawyer, I'm humbled, and it's made me realize that uh, we've got loopholes in our system. Because that person's name was actually inserted either by someone in-house who has the passwords or someone who was able to hack but, but is it a reflection of our culture in any way because you've heard of so of even uh, people vying for positions and being said that they have fake papers no no uh, security cyber security is big everywhere in the world yes you have a system but you must have uh, several layers of security around any system so this tells you mm -hmm. there's something wrong with your system either exposure to too many people with the system without the good thing with a system is when you hack it, you can actually be able to trace who, okay. who okay. got in eventually, yeah. but it's after the fact. All right. But so um, I think this, is, this goes out, I think it's something that all professions, mm. whether it's accountants, whether it's doctors, oh. whether... But should he be allowed? Should people like those be allowed? I think, I think that's a bigger allowed conversation. To allowed to be allowed to do what? To, to practice, practice law. But from we are saying this is a fake person. And no, uh, we are saying what we the conversation... Allowed. I've seen a discussion between... He wasn't like, allowed, like he fraudulently. And uh, the Grand Mola, and the discussion here is yeah. if people have certain abilities but they only lack the papers, <laughs> could we, as in other countries like the UK, allow people like Mwenda to practice law? Well, no, he can no. sit. That is the conversation. Okay. Okay. No, All right. That is the conversation. I think Manyora <laughs> is confusing. <laughs> That's the conversation. Uh, Kenya used to have article clerkship mm. where people like uh, Paul Mwite, yes. senior counsel, yes. was able to, but, but he didn't acquire it by being a quack. Yeah. He spent many, many years, years as an article clerk under qualified advocates and then because of his years of practice and learning on the job a print apprentice <laughs> and learning that then he was able okay. because of those years instead of you going to class because you've even done longer than someone do at university mm -hmm. you then sat the bar exams all right and then you got a credit okay. so don't confuse it with a quack oh, okay Th that's okay Article, um, uh, let's quickly uh, take a look at uh, uh, different. Uh, recognition of a bit of yes yeah. which is actually recognized under our team yeah. mm -hmm. uh, this is um <laughs> Again, Ole Shonko, this government supported farmers while planting and promised to buy the produce from them once they harvest, only to abandon them. We need to know who is moving cards in the whole issue of GMO. Um, who else is saying? Bobo Tieno, no, GMO that's... or no GMO foods? What matters is Bora Kutakuwa na Chakula. It's a very desperate case. Yes, I'm not. Mm. Okay. Um, Kevin.
Kamanyi, in counties where in countries where GMO food is allowed, there is a lot of fear in the general public such that the products must be clearly marked as GMO as a warning, the same way we mark nicotine products. Okay. Mulem medicate, I guess. Um, there is a need to have a food and agriculture authority to handle issues of food safety and food we security. Do we do have. Currently no particular government authority with specific functions on food safety and we actually do. No um, less than 10. Kalia, uh, the most deliberate decision the government of the day can make at the moment of, on fuel is to reduce VAT on fuel back to 8%. That would definitely have a positive impact on the cost of living. And uh, Babu Michael, the Kenya Kwanzaa government uh, has and is proving that they are a government that is not pro-people but is concentrating on other matters which mostly don't go well with the larger population from the finance bill or Act 2023 to fuel prices to now Mavoko demolitions. Of course, so much more uh, that uh, is happening in the public spaces. We'll continue to talk about this and look for answers. We hope you also do as you choose what's best for you and your family. Thank you all. Honorable Jeffrey Wandeto, Honorable Gladys Bos, Honorable Beatrice Zelachi, and Herman Manyara for making time for us of this conversation. See you again some other time. Bye for now.